Good afternoon. It's good to see each of you out today. I'm so thankful that you could come and honor your family, Sister Bonnie and others uh, this afternoon. Jeff was an inspiration to so many of us, and it's going to be an easy thing to do this afternoon, so we're going to look forward to that. May the Spirit of God bless you. May He give you comfort as we go into this service. And if you haven't gotten one of these, I believe there's some more in the back, and uh, certainly take advantage of that. If you have a cell phone, uh, would you please check and make sure that it's in the office issue, and that would be an uh, honor for everyone to see all of you. May the Lord bless you. started here, I'd like to say, uh, even though it seems like we already had a rehearsal for this, you know, but uh, like someone said one time, you know, you know, we don't always have the rehearsal, it's, it's the real thing. And, uh, but uh, I'd like to play this trumpet, this is my dad's personal trumpet, I'd like to play it in honor of him. And uh, I didn't mention this yesterday, and those of you who don't know, uh, recognize the name of the song, it's called My Tribute. 
And uh, uh, just some of the words, uh, it just says, how can I say thanks for all the things you've done? Yes. Yes. Thanks, so on the earth, yeah, you give yeah, to prove your love, Lord. The voices of million angels could not express my gratitude. Um, all that I am and never hope to be, I owe it all to thee. You know, we could actually say that about that, but most of all, we say it about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, like the chorus says, to God be the glory. Great thanks to you. Yes. Please pray for me. I hope to get through it, but uh, uh, do it as honor, honor to Dad. You blessed us with a, a wonderful man. He touched us in so many ways. And thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we were able to spend time on earth with Kent. Thank you, Lord, for his impact on each and every one of our lives. That's why we're here today, is to honor Kent for a life well lived because he gave his heart and life to you. 
Lord, we're thankful for how you used Kent in the ministry. You blessed his ministry in many ways. Think of all the many, many uh, things that he did in the ministry uh, through the church, through the rest homes, through the mission, the many places there he impacted on us. And his music, how you. He blessed others with his music in so many ways. And most of all, his testimony that he gave his heart and life to you, and he lived the life of a Christian. And that's what it means all when it's all said and done that we live pleasing in your sight. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Lord, we want you to have honor and glory in this service, Lord. Every note in music, every word spoken would give you honor and you glory. Thank you. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And it's not goodbye. It's see you later.
September 2nd, 2023. Kent was born to Melvin and Emily Cook Thompson on December 9th, 1957 in Richland Center, Wisconsin. Later, the stepson of Tom and Alice Iverson. He grew up on a dairy farm in Richland County. Kent loved to drive the tractors and be surrounded by God's creation. He attended the Apostolic Faith Church in Richland Center, and it was there where he experienced God's amazing grace when he asked Jesus to forgive him of his sins and come into his heart. In 1986, Kent moved to rural New Richland, Minnesota, working in the scrap iron business, farming, and lawn care. His greatest calling was to be a pastor at the Epstock Faith Church, first in Minnesota Lake, and most recently in Minneapolis. This is where he inspired, encouraged, and devoted his life by serving others. He not only preached the word, but he lived it. He appreciated the support, love, and prayers of all those around him, and his life was grounded in Jesus and centered around not only his biological but also his church families. Kent shared his talents with the Lord in many ways. He learned to play the piano, violin, trumpet, and baritone. He sang and led the church choir. And most of us can remember this part. One of his greatest joys was singing bass in the male quartet. A dream of Kent was to become a pilot and own his own airplane. His dream became a reality, <clears throat> and he received his pilot's license on November 20th, 2009. He delighted in taking friends and family for rides in his 172 Cessna. Kent was devoted to his wife, Bonnie, for 45 years. The bond they shared was as unique as it was deep. The Lord proved himself faithful to them over and over. Kent was very fond of being surrounded by his children and his grandchildren. 
They all knew, probably still know, he loved and prayed for them daily. Ken was a blessing to all his family. He appreciated working, relaxing, worshiping, side by side with everyone. He was blessed to be part of a God-fearing, loving family. Those left to cherish his memory includes his wife, Pine, Minneapolis, his children, Chad and Miranda Thompson of Kitchener, Ontario, Ken, Cammie, and Dan Kaler of Minneapolis, Ken and Claudia Thompson of Mount Juliet, Tennessee, along with his precious grandchildren, Lexi, Liam, Sophia, Kennedy, Hannah, Ella, Sawyer, and Josiah. He is also survived by seven of his siblings, Kevin and Julie Thompson, Kirby and Shannon Thompson, Kendi and Herb Carter, Karen and Scott Thompson, Carl and Tiffany Thompson, Corey and Bethany Thompson, Caleb and Sandra Thompson, step parents, Alice and Tom Iverson, many wonderful nieces and nephews. He would also like to acknowledge Bonnie's family for all the help, love, and support throughout the years. Ken was preceded in death by his parents, Melvin and Emily, his brother Curtis, his daughter-in-law Rebecca Thompson, and her unborn child.
Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth and the way to all generations. I do appreciate it. It should be being here today. You know, uh, like I said earlier, you, know, you don't always get a rehearsal for things like this. But uh, we're so thankful for uh, the memories we have. Because we can hang on to those. You know, that's something that death does not take away. And uh, we're so thankful for uh, the example that dad was. And, uh, you know, we're, we're about ready, all of us here. I'm going to join as one choir. We're going to sing the song, one of Dad's uh, uh, favorite hymns. It's called It Is Well With My Soul. And uh, before we do that, though, and, if, and those who can uh, see the TV there, um, growing up, uh, different things that, you know, we, uh, especially when we ventured out, uh, we got our own families. Um, you know, as kids, you know, when we had special moments in our lives, you know, we, we, we usually like to call on mom and dad. And uh, just let them know, you know, so that they can share our joy. And, um, you know, that was a, a special, especially to me personally. I mean, because I can speak for myself. But uh, this uh, picture up here, it shows a couple pictures. This is one of those moments. You know, like I said, um, you know, we, we all know Dad loved music. You know, whether it was playing, singing, or whatever, whatever it was, listening. You know, I, I mentioned to someone, um, uh, to my mom and brother as we were driving the rest of the way here, you know, dad didn't always, if you were traveling with him, he didn't always talk. You know, he, uh, he was pretty quiet, <laughs> you know, but, you know, he didn't need to talk, you know, just knowing that each other was there. You know, I spent so much time with dad growing up. Um, you know, I, I used to travel with him with the different jobs he did, whether he was driving semi, we'd get up early in the morning, we'd go to travel to deliver the grain. You know, there's times where I had to fight staying up because I felt so bad dad had to be up driving that uh, I would try to uh, stay up with him, you know, because I just felt so bad for him. And, uh, but you know, I, I appreciate those memories, you know, of, of being with dad, you know, and that's something that me, uh, myself can personally uh, cherish. And, um, but, uh, but this uh, is one of the latest memories uh, probably that I have uh, before dad, dad passed. And um, not far from where I live, actually, it's probably, well, it's less than three hours away, but um, it's, there was a town called Port Hope, Ontario. And this town is actually uh, the, if you want to say, the birthplace of the song, uh, the words to the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And, uh, you know, those who know the words to that uh, know that we, we all, as you know, those who are Christians, uh, cherish those words. You know, it's encouraging to us, you know, but it was just one of those moments that, you know, I took my, I had my phone there and I put it on the, on the, the, um, you know, the, the camp, webcam thing, whatever. And, you know, just wanted to share that moment with mom and dad, especially because, you know, going through what we've been going through and we're so thankful that, you know, we had extra memories of dad before, you know, before the, the end there. But, uh, you know, I just appreciate that because, you know, dad lived those words. Some people they have a hard time singing hymns because of the words. You know, because when you're saying, singing those words, it's like you're saying them for yourself. But 
you know, words like that, words like one of the other ones I mentioned was uh, um, uh, yesterday was a uh, song that he mentioned was one of his favorites was all of that thrills my soul is Jesus. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. You know, I'm thankful for that heritage. I don't want to pass on. I don't want it to stop right here. You know, and I just thank the Lord for what he's done, you know, for my life, what he's done for my family, you know, especially this time. And, and even before dad passed, he would tell us, you know, when I would tell him, you know, we're praying for you, our church is praying for you, you know, when I was up in Kitchener. And, you know, and he knew that people were praying for us. And he appreciated it. Yes. And you know, that's one of the benefits of being in this gospel, you know, is that we can pray one for another and that we can be there, you know. But I just think that I was able to share this memory with dad and mom too as well. And I just thank the Lord for what he's done. And I'm thankful for, for the, the words of these hymns that it gives us encouragement that we can keep on keeping on. And that's one of the phrases dad used to always love to say is to keep on keeping on. And so we're going to all stand as we sing this song. I believe the words are going to be up on the screen there. And let's just sing this with one uh, joyful choir here today. And uh, in memory of Dad, but also uh, worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to sing uh, the verses 1, 2, and 4 of this song. When peace like a river
We'd like to begin by thanking you for coming and celebrating Kent's life and all the memories and that, that, that we have of him. Uh, I'd also like to thank Kirby, my brother, also for contributing to, to this and the great words that he had, had given us and will give us through this, and also the people that have contributed to the memories of that of Kent. There are a lot of them. If you look and think about it, there's a lot of them that are the same. But memories were very similar and related. You know, music and, and farming and all sorts of things, which is really, really cool. So, um, so we took a lot of these and just put them together and you'll hear from family members and from members outside of the family. He was touching everybody that he met in the name of Jesus. So, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and delighteth in his way, Psalm 37, 23. As Bonnie Kent's chosen soulmate often said, he is a good man, proved true throughout his life. From childhood, orchard work, farming, driving a school bus, carpet cleaning, salvage work, recycling, parenting, to pastoring, his steps were clearly ordered by the Lord. And Psalm 91 begins with, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. This was Kent's daily walk. So we're going to begin with some of the memories. Of course, I'm the oldest, so I get to go first, I guess. Uh, some of the memories here. And um, one of the things that, that we always remember as a family is that uh, we all like sports. We all like doing that. But one of the problems that the rest of his siblings had were uh, that, uh, that we couldn't beat him. He always he was stronger, taller, bigger than us. So we would play basketball in the hay now, we would throw the football in the hay field, we would play softball in the hay field, but you know, we always had to run further to get his ball and things like that. So, so those are some of the memories from, from my youth and when, uh, when we were growing up. So unfortunately, a lot of my memories were when we were growing up because as we got older, we went our separate ways with our separate families and unfortunately, um, we, we didn't keep in touch as much as we did as a kid. We had lots of fun that we won't be able to, to mention all of them today. Kent and I enjoyed and loved growing up on the farm. I think his priorities in life were faith, family, farming, and food. When we were old enough, Kent and I would do the morning chores and, and Dad and Kirby would do the evening chores, which gave Kent and myself some time together and we would do things, uh, um, probably play ball, fishing, whatever it might be. We also owned one of the cows and all the calves after that, and uh, just as something that, that we wanted to, uh, to do that made us feel like we were part of the farm. And of course, we expected the profits from Dad when we sold the calves and so on. Kent really enjoyed working out in the field, which was probably due to in part to uh, the combining that he had to step into immediately when my, my mom passed away. Uh, he was very young in age. Um, one thing that I did write down that uh, that he did everything very young. In fact, he could play the violin before he could read. So we would go up to lacrosse. Um, Helen Carter would take us up there. We for lessons. He would go for violin. I'd go for cello, and and he would be up there playing. And uh, he could read the words, but he could he could read the notes, but couldn't read the words. Um, a few years ago, Kent and I went on to the Farm Progress Days at Wisconsin Farm Show of all of the different equipment and so forth. We enjoyed that immensely, um, and especially, again, we enjoyed the food. They had great food. Our cousins, Jerry and Kendall Cook, visited us on the farm often, and the things I remember about that was the fact that they'd always bring fireworks. I don't know if they were legal or not, but they would bring fireworks. <laughs> and we would play up in the uh, play up in the rocks and uh, do a lot of other things with them. And it was a lot of fun that everybody enjoyed, enjoyed that. We all had fun talking tractors and farming. And it was really cool that in the last few years, Kent and I were able to uh, purchase the same tractor, same John Deere. So, 
So when I went up there, I drove his tractor. When he came down, he didn't necessarily drive it, but we went and looked at it at least. And so it was, it, it's not so much the tractor, but it was the, the, the commonality of things that, things that you had in common that you could do together that you could remember down the road. Right. Um, Kent and Bonnie attended many of our Thanksgiving dinners. My wife was very, very good at uh, having people over for for meals and loved doing that for families. And we had a lot of great time with food and memories and with all of the kids, all of the siblings would come over for Thanksgiving. And so it got to be 60, 70 people in our family. And then, you know, stop, I guess. <laughs> or scale back, let's see. Uh, one thing that I uh, I remember was that Kent and I were coming to our house for some reason, I don't know, for Thanksgiving or whatever, but our church that we attended was having a service that night or a celebration that night. And the, the cool thing of it was is that Kent and I would play the Rex once in a while, but one of the things is that at our church I played my trombone, that night he had brought his, his trumpet. And it was so cool that we, he, they made it before the service. We came. He went. He and I went downstairs for a couple passes through one of the hymns that I was going to play by myself, and we were able to do uh, do it together in the service, which was really cool. And the really thing that was really nice is that I can't transpose very well, so I have to play the bass clef. And, and when you look at the hymn notes, you have to transpose for the trumpet. And he always did that, and he didn't have to write it down or anything. He could do it on the fly, and that was really impressive to me. Um, do you know that the memories are still being made? We aren't here because of any other reason. We've talked to so many people, met so many people. 18 years, 25, 30 years ago, we met some of these people here, but of course we, we remember them after they give us their name because, you know, of course, some of us are getting older than many others. Um, so we are meeting people all the time in these memories. We're, we're going to make memories out of this as well. Um, I have to admit that after yesterday's celebration, it was obvious that Kent had touched so many lives. I regret the fact that I had not kept in touch with, with some of the people that we met for so long. We know more about Kent than we did by sharing our memories, as you will find when we get through this, because there's stuff in here from my siblings that I didn't know happened. Um, and, um, and you will too, probably. Another memory, this is a tough one for me in a way to, to, to say, was, was when our 13-year-old granddaughter found out that Uncle Kent had passed away, she texted me something that Winnie the Pooh said. And he said that, um, how lucky I am to have had something that makes saying goodbye so hard. And I never really looked at it that way. You know, you look at all of these things and you wish you didn't have adversity and that in your life, but when you think about it, what if you didn't have that? Then you wouldn't have as many memories as you would have otherwise. Kennedy shares, I don't remember much from childhood. I was probably the pesky little sister. I do remember he seemed to look funny in his football. I don't remember him involved in any sibling rivalries, except I heard that he protected the football. So, uh, he probably wanted to make sure he knew where it was the next time he wanted it. <clears throat> Kent was there for me throughout my adult life. He made it possible for me to visit places I would not have experienced otherwise. We visited the Creation Museum, the Ark, took a road trip to the West Coast, creating a lot of memories along the way, as well as a second trip by plane just last year. And we enjoyed multiple music programs together. The last trip I had with Kent was to Branson, Missouri in March of this year. It was to be a ladies' retreat, and it still was. He was, he was we told him that he was a bodyguard. <laughs> I am so thankful for the many adventures our families were able to experience together. Kent was a support in, both phys in life, both physically and spiritually. He made countless trips to Richland Center to help us in our church. Many sermons, advice, repairs, and was a great support during special meetings. I am so thankful for his testimony. His joy was to help others. The song, Thank You for Giving to the Lord, could be happening in heaven right now. Only it's not a dream. I'm sure there are people in heaven because against desire to go above and beyond Jesus' free 
Karen shares, from hay rides to horse-drawn carts to many trips around the farm on a tractor or snowmobile, these rides were what we all look forward to. The fun on those 160 acres took us to adventures where they, whether they be real or imaginary. Some of our other memories include my first understanding of who the Great Bay Packers were, the introduction of the CB radio, the many trips to Minnesota so he could spend time with Bonnie when I would keep him company on the road, rainy days when he would drive us to Madison or lacrosse so we could go shopping. Gospel Quartet concerts at the auditorium because Kirby and Kent just were wanting to be in a quartet. They were going to be in a quartet. Well, that happened. Many, many Saturday nights of horseshoes, quartet practice, and pizza. Lots of hard work bailing hay, feeding cows, planting and harvesting crops, but we still had fun with basketball hoops and hay forts in the old barn. To sledding, snowmobiling, and horse rides, we had it all. One of my three Older brothers I looked up to, knowing he had your back when you needed it, carrying you to the car when you were injured, were injured in a lawnmower accident as you needed to get to the hospital. As life happens, we all grew up having children, starting careers, but one thing that was consistent was always family. Meeting up in Branston, Kent was persistent that Dustin and I stay for the So Well Sights and Sounds program. They were uh, attending. He said to Bonnie, go one more time and check to see if they have room, and unfortunately they did. Kent's love and for God and family were very evident in his everyday life, and an example of kindness and compassion for everyone, such as his gentle smile and quiet voice, was an often response to your statement, you think so, huh? <laughs> Carl and Tiffany recalls, we have a lot of great memories. One memory of Tiffany is always uh, is that all, she always enjoyed mixing the sound for the quartet. She enjoyed singing in on practices and obviously the performances. I know you were not supposed to have favorites, but she had a favorite part that was definitely Kent's. She loved listening to him singing in the bass, singing the bass. In practice, she would turn his part up just a little bit more in her head set. Another memory was when we went up to Minnesota for Tiffany's continuing education courses when they would meet for the day. While Tiff was in school, they went to the Mall of America, the kids did the Metro for the first time, they hung out with Cammy's kids, the train store, and so much more. Kent flew down for Caden and Chris's birthday party and surprised them. Another time, he took Caden and me up in his plane for a tour of Richmond County. He drove Chris around the airport in the plane. He was always encouraging in our interests. We would throw the football around outside together. Tiff remembers hearing him preach for the first time in Minnesota Lake. Carl enjoyed listening and talking to about Southern gospel music, talks on his birthday, playing horseshoes and sitting around the piano. Corey remembers Dad telling of the time when he and Kent were working on something and Dad said he went to lift it and could barely move it. Kent not only moved it, but he also lifted it up and put it where he needed it to be, so he must have been pretty uh, strong at a young age. Kent's love of farming tractors, especially John Deere airplanes, flying remote control airplanes, and the time he flew one right into the chicken coop with your memories. Also playing horseshoe with Leroy Stahl, throwing footballs and being amazed how far he could throw. I always wondered what could have been after hearing the story of the football coach coming to ask Dad to allow him to play in high school. Kent and I talked about that and part of him and wondered that too. He doesn't regret anything, but sometimes their minds wonder, what if? I remember wanting to be a bass or baritone like my older, older brothers because I wanted to be like them. One time when the quartet was singing a spiritual entitled Little David, Kent sang the bass part, which stated, there's sinners in hell for shooting nice. This brought me to gut laughter, and to which Cammy, Chad, and Cammy all started laughing too. Good times. Corey received a book from Ben and Hannah titled Grandpa Tell Me of the Time, which is focused on memories and stories about me. One question asked in the book was, who were your heroes growing up? I thought about this and I wrote, my other older brothers, they were big and strong and I always looked up to them. Still do, by the way, even at age 47. 
it wasn't just the modeling price, which is important, but it was the way they were there for us. I always felt I could go to them for anything at any time. One thing that I thank Kent and Bonnie for personally was how they were there for the big stuff like graduation parties and weddings and uh, those types of events. A great memory for me during a not so great time was Dad's funeral. We were not standing in birth order in the receiving line and Kent and I were standing together. People would come up and ask our names and where we were in birth order. We had so many people ask us that that Kent and I started introducing ourselves as Kent number two and Corey number seven. The, that memory still makes me smile. We still have taken, we have taken many pictures over the years. And the one thing that was constant was Kent was always in the middle. I guess I would say dog, but it's <laughs> always dolls. Um, he was kind of, he would kind of stand in his spot in the middle and we would all fill in around him. Kind of funny, but symbolic too. He had those special memories. He remembered when he was little that he went with Kent and Bonnie and the kids to various nursing homes and they would sing together for the services. The one song that he really remembers Kent singing is Day by Day. He loved hearing his voice and in his teen years Kent was his counselor at a youth camp in St. Charles, Minnesota. He made sure that we understand how important it was to be saved and that we loved the Lord of all of our heart. In his 20s, he had the privilege of his two brothers, Kent and Kirby, baptizing him. That was a special moment. He will cherish these memories and many others that he has um, of spending a lot of time with him. I um, wanted to read mention one of the things she remembers about the family was when um, the family would get together, there was always singing and laughing together. Sister Antonio Schleicher said, I just cannot get away from his amazing smiles. Hardly got ruffled, very peaceful. We need more men like him around with us. Joel McCarville said, when the boys were small, Bonnie and Kent, the boys, and I, Joel, decided to go tent camping, and this happened to be Kent and Bonnie's first time tent camping. We all were in one tent, and during the night I woke up and I was at the tent to go out and almost stepped on a skunk. <laughs> I became the committee of one to chase it away. How do you chase a skunk? I went under Kenny's car and he stomped on the floorboards to chase it out. Somehow it left without spreading us. Quite an interesting thing. Alice and Tom have uh, uh, some memories as well that uh, Kent and Kevin were candle lighters at, at our father's and her wedding. The new Grandpa Primo enjoyed taking us fishing and even on a train ride to Chicago. Kent was a big help to Grandpa and Grandma Primo in that apple orchard. Kent was a very good brother to the siblings that followed. Kent did not like mixed foods such as casseroles. However, when Alice found the tuna fish recipe, it was a big hit with Kent and other family members. That recipe is still a family favorite. After high school, Kent worked on the family farm and after marrying Bonnie, they made a hardworking farm team. At the time when Chad was born, Grandpa Melvin received the news while milking cows. He ended up milking one cow twice and missed one altogether. <laughs> Kent gave a sermonette when Tom Iris and Mary Alice. They both, both enjoyed Kent singing the song, I bet you can guess, day by day. They are thankful for the love he gave them and oh how they loved him. Kent gave a sermon about the dash and the tombstone. How we live during the dash in the tombstone between the dates is the up, of utmost importance. We need to be sure that we meet God in peace at the last date because we have repented and because our sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus. Cash, Kent's dash is done. His life's race has been run. His prize of heaven has been won. Amen. Dixie Matthews, a wife of a previous pastor in Minneapolis, shared. There is a flood of memories of when Brother Ken's and Sister Bonnie moved to Minneapolis and began the ministry there. He quickly learned the special needs of the congregation. His kindness and gentle spirit won our confidence. He and his sister Bonnie were not he and Sister Bonnie were not some outside force coming in to tell us what to do, but they were in the agape charity, loving spirit of Christ that flowed into our lives. As her pastor wife, we they care for us in practical and spiritual ways. I have memory pictures of Brother Kent caring for his people by installing locks on doors, replacing one of the water heaters, 
cleaning sidewalks after a snowstorm, cutting up a tree that toppled in a storm, and just being available and sending a helping hand. There are memories of Kent dedicating babies, comforting the sick, praying with them for his people. Memories of him and Jack cleaning the snow for our walks, driveway, uh, and driveway when we could no longer do so. His life was laced with good deeds, and he did it all with grace and kindness. Sister Bonnie was a supporting helper. Mitchell Custer shared he was a great man, no question. Tola, Tola Mosun mentioned that to pastor, brother, and friend, we can't ever thank God for the well life and well lived life of gentleness, meekness, loving, and caring. Our pastor was a faithful, devoted, and courageous man of God, always abounding in the work of the Lord and doing what was best for him. He takes care of his sheep and is always there to help his congregation. He was a big brother to us and a godfather to our kids, a mentor, a quintessential of brotherly love and dignity. dignity. As a friend, he was just a call away, always willing to help. We were praying for a miracle and complete divine healing manifestation, but it pleased the Lord to take him home now. Who are we to question God, and what more can we say but to accept this from God? We believe he is resting in the name of Bill Steyer sent a, a lengthy email, and I think the a copy of it is in the back. Um, it was a little too long to read here, so it's in the back if you're interested. It's also posted on the press um, film service website. But he shared some of his memories and experiences with gifts and making it. Um, and so um, he, he shared them with us, and, um, and there's some pictures of this uh, flight crew that he uh, communicated and spent some time with. Kirby shared, even though he was missing a finger due to a farm accident, he would lead so others could see the good way. Why even one new piano teacher didn't know the missing finger for many lessons. But one day she said, use your third finger to play that note. His reply, I don't have one. This didn't stop him from accompanying his family or church group in a song and hindering him from willingly lifting up others, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in a camp, a church, or a mission. Maybe we'll hear his trumpet or euphonium playing in the background orchestra accompanying the angel Gabriel when he blows the that imminent and final fanfare to gather the family of God together. If you check into the Apostolic Faith Missions website, you will read items like the Bible teaching was given by Ken Thompson, the pastor of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and his theme was looking forward, praying forward, and moving forward. A wonderful prayer meeting followed as seekers consecrated their lives to God. Another one was a sermon expert of Ken, excerpt of Kent's includes Psalm 1, which tells of life's two roads, the way of the godly, the way of the ungodly. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Psalm 1 6. The gospel has substance. The godly follow the Lord and are obedient to his will. We delight in his way and his blessing. Let us purpose to be among them. Kirby also says, I will not forget your last football pass to me, which was only about two months ago when in early July all of the siblings got together. I hobbled as fast as I could on my less than sturdy legs across the yard, and as usual, you placed the ball right into my arms. Now the perfect pass has been completed, and you're in the arms of Jesus, the one you love so much. I can almost see you now thanking the Lord for his love, sacrifice, mercy, eternal salvation, and grace unto you. Then out of Dad's open arms for a celebration of eternal joy. Oh, and look over there by the Crystal River. A familiar face, it's mom, who be who, whom you haven't seen since 1967. You were only 10 when she knelt by your bed and prayed for you before stepping that night under the golden shores. Those prayers of hers have been answered. Yes, a brother, Kurt, probably knocked you over with his exuberance, but what a homecoming. Can't keep watching at the gate. Soon we'll be joining you around the table the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen.
friend of Ken Thompson. Not a lot of personal thoughts, but a couple, I guess. I don't know why two pastors that are busy thought we should buy a canoe together. But we did. And we enjoyed it. Ken was scared when we got over here by the park when we saw the rapids and we got excited. We turned sideways, but we made it through anyhow. After we got his pilot's license, he flew down here. I guess probably just for practice. He was so serious, but he had a wonderful sense of humor. I met him out at the airport and he said, You want to go for a ride? And I looked at him and said, Well, you okay? uh, You're ready to take my life in your hands yet? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know. And he got back to the airplane and went back to Minneapolis. <laughs> about three months later, he flew down again and I asked him the same question. He said, Yeah, I think I could now. You have to think about it later. He had to fly all the way home anyhow. The Bible says, For God is so wonderful. That he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In God's economy, perishing would be going to a lost eternity without knowing that name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We're thankful this morning that we know where Brother Kent is. I, even as a friend, I call him Brother Kent. I just admire him that much. I so appreciate him allowing me to be what he called a little brother. I don't know if that's because I was shorter or he was a year older or both. But he loved the gospel. And he loved people. As we were working around the church up there in Minneapolis while he was not feeling well. And the people would come by on the sidewalk and we would stop and engage them. And you know what, Brother Ken, why done that? Got talking to the man across the street and across the fence and wherever it was. He was already there. He had already done it. He would already helped them remove snow. He had done all those different things because he loved people. And he loved the gospel. And he wanted the light of the gospel to shine through in something that he did a few months back when he said, uh, Brother John, I'm not doing well. It's hard for me to even imagine that, Sister Barney. <coughs> but he said, if I pass, he said, can't you not get a pass? Well, that'd be better. But if I pass, would you do what I'm trying to do here this morning? This evening, rather. The verse that came to me almost immediately was one we've already heard today. Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. And I didn't think about that verse because I thought God, the kid ought to find that place. I thought of that verse because I don't know anybody that walked any closer to that secret place. And as you look through the Word of God, I thought about that as somewhere satisfied with visiting the secret place once in a while, but the word of God says that they're going to abide in the shadow, we're going to have to dwell in the secret place. And I really do believe that uh, Brother Kent did that. Psalmist goes on to say, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him will I trust. What a hope we have in Jesus Christ. Don't you thankful and that we can be in this place today and know that we can see our brother, our husband, whatever he was to you, a uh, sibling. We can do that because of the word of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was praying, Not my will, but thy be done. If this cup could pass from me. He was about ready to be made sin for the whole world. And he was about ready to be separated from his father and the heartbreak that was going to go with that. We ought to be heartbroken also to be separated from the Father. But he held on. He said, not my will, but thine be done. And there on the cross, he said, I thirst. And I believe he took on the dregs of the whole world, things that, that you don't even want to think about. But then he said, it is finished. And long before a 10 or 11 year old boy, no, just a couple blocks up here, and said, God, come into my heart. Jesus, whatever he said, I don't know how theological it was, but he wrapped up his life 
and he asked the Lord to forgive him. And I used to pastor up there, and I thought so many times I heard him say it. And I'd look out the side window, he said, I saw the sun shining through that glass. And I thought, that's just like the peace I feel in my heart. God knows how to do those things, don't they? May God communicate his hope uh, to you uh, this afternoon. We were talking up in Minneapolis, some of you were there, so I hope that's okay. But as I was thinking about Kent's life, I thought about the qualifications of a godly man or woman. And you don't have to just be in the ministry. They're good qualifications. It says this, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God. You hear Kent in this at all? Not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not quarrelsome other, not given to filthy lucre, not overtaken with just a desire to make a lot of money, but a lover of hospitality. Is this fitting? A lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. And then it goes on to say, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convince the game. Sayers. Brother Kent wasn't easily swayed. He had a hold of a truth down in his heart and others came and went and, and took on this or took on that, but he just stuck to the truth of the gospel. Right. He knew who he believed and he was just going to stay faithful to it. And of all the things that Brother Kent aspired to, I look at some of your faces and I know as we uh, talked at different times on the telephone and he say, I'm praying for this. And I pray for that and, and know that many of you, as I look out across the audience, he was praying for you. And he was praying for his congregation. He was praying for his family and all those situations. And here we are uh, today. And, and the last prayer uh, on this earth by Brother Kent has been prayed. But the Bible lets us know that we have Jesus, who is our advocate, who is interceding for every one of us because he cares about us. That he wants to see us someday in heaven and, and he's still reaching out. Been some 50 years since I can't pray to go to church to get a chance to just drive by. Porter Burton and Larson. Look at one of those windows if it's not available to go inside and think about a young man, not very old, but he'd already faced some things, he'd faced some loss in life, and he needed a comfort in his soul. And as he knelt there, the Lord came and made a change. And he said this, I never lost it. I never lost it. May God help us. Lord speaking to Isaiah said, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Deuteronomy says this, The eternal God is my refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. I hope that as we go through this, maybe not right now, as you just breathe in and breathe out and just try to make it to the next day, maybe it's not as obvious, but I hope somewhere down in the very near future you realize that underneath are the arms of Jesus. And he cares about you. And he's concerned about you. And he wants to hold you up. He wants to help you through this. And he will. First Corinthians says this, The sting of death is sin. He goes on to say this, But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where it comes from. And the Lord will help us. Uh, there's a little girl up in Minneapolis. I just had to have this last night. I don't know what her name is. She's five or six years old. And she came bouncing up to us, big smile on her face. And she said, Brother Kids with Jesus. And I think somebody said, she doesn't realize what's going on. And I thought, you know what? I think that little girl knows what's going on more than some of the adults. She was happy. Brother Kids with Jesus. Brother Kids with Jesus. And that's what we should be saying this morning. He's fought the fight. He's won it. He's gone home. And God will help him through that. We mentioned that though for those who are in Minneapolis, as I was thinking about Brother Kent, I thought about the second kings. Two men, Elijah and Elisha. Elisha was just out doing what he loved to do. He was out on the farm. He had his implements. He was going about farming and, and doing what he, he loved to do. And one day Elijah came by and threw his mantle across his shoulders. And that was enough. And the call of God went forward. And as I went down to uh, Brother Kent and Sister Bonnie's a little farm last October, never been there before. And I thought about the call of God, how much he loved farming, how much he loved the implements, how much he loved the tractors. But the call of God came, will you go up there to the cities and, and minister up there? 
And you know what? He said yes. He left everything that he really dearly loved to do. And they went up there. And I remember one thing he told me. He said, John, I was scared to go. But he said, I prayed about it. And God said, if you go, I will protect you and your family. And he did, didn't he? Say to your friends, we're going to need to come for the next few days. No getting around it. But that comes in Jesus Christ our Lord. He will come down and he will make a change. But he will help us through. We got talking about Elijah and Elisha. We got talking about the mantle as Elijah was taken up into heaven. And that mantle fell to the ground. And there has been a mantle that's been dropped, if you will. The mantle that a kid lived his life as a father, as a husband, as a pastor, as a friend, uh, just as a worker. Uh, the testimonies I've heard about just laboring, all those things, that mantle has fallen to the ground. May God help us. Even this afternoon, they would just pick it up. They would pick it up and God will help us. He will be near you. He loves you. He cares about you. He wants to have a, you in heaven with him. I don't know if you're saved or who's saved or who isn't this morning. That's not my job. I can't get anybody in the gate. I can't keep anybody out and I wouldn't want to. But I know this much. The God that saved Brother Kim a number of years ago. If you don't know him this afternoon, give him a chance. He'll come into your life. And you'll enjoy life and more abundantly. Reading from 1 Thessalonians 4.13, the hope that we have ahead of us. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, I trust that's everybody in here today, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain after the coming of the Lord, that shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend uh, from heaven with a shout, uh, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And he finishes with, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words.
Shall we stand up to pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. We are grateful for this day. We are grateful for this moment. We are grateful that you gave Brother Kent to this world. You gave him to the family. You gave him to the church. We thank you for the grace of God that brought salvation unto mankind, of which Brother Kent took advantage. Now he fought the good fight. He won the race. He's not getting the crown of glory which is open to each and every one of us. He had done his part. The battle is now on us. Help us to number our days so that we can keep our heart in wisdom. Father, as we gather here now, Lord, we want our life to come. And that is by giving our hearts to you. Lord, if there is anyone here, either from the Thompson's family, friends and families that are here, that are yet to see the vision of heaven, that are yet to commit their life to Jesus, Lord, we pray that this occasion we ginger them up. Amen. So that they know that our days are numbers. That the coming of Jesus is very imminent. The trumpet will soon sound. The dead in Christ, including our dear brother Kent, will rise first. And those of all that are left here, whose name have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, will follow suit. So, Lord, help us this day to think about our past, write our way with you. Get our name written in the book of life. Amen. So that when the trumpet will sound, we will see our brother. Those who have gone before, before us, hand by hand, we will walk to the throne of grace to behold our, sweet, our beloved Jesus Amen. and forever live with him forever. Lord, we pray for us. The family, the wife, the children, the relatives, oh God, that the Lord of comfort will comfort them. Amen. We pray especially for the church of God in Minneapolis, Lord. Raise up a shepherd. Amen. Lord, raise up a shepherd. Raise up a faithful shepherd that brother Kent. That your, God, your church will continue to work stronger and stronger until you come to take us home. Grant the only message to those who have traveled. The memory of this day, let it remain with us. Let it change us to think about our past and to get right with God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each and every one of us now until we see Jesus face to face. 